When it comes to providing security around a perimeter, be it a base, or even something like a school, gone are the days of a lone watchstander dutifully filling his or her rounds with a walk of the fence line and maybe with a don't mess with me type German shepherd in tow. Well, not exactly. You're still probably going to have to do gate guard duty, you're still going to be manning a watch desk in the barracks, and likely still running perimeter checks. You never can be too sure. But if you're that guard walking that perimeter, wouldn't it be nice if you had some eyes on, maybe a little information before you get to location so you know what you're going to face? A company called Zero Eyes, which launched in 2018 to combat school shooters with artificial intelligence and military veteran-run operations centers, might have a solution. The company is now working with the Air Force on a contract to put a camera software combination on drones and give those drones ways to deter, deflect, and disorient any would-be base intruder. We spoke with JT Wilkins, a Marine Corps veteran and senior vice president for government solutions at Zero Eyes, about his company's efforts. You have a location with 150 to 200 cameras. You take that into a K through 12 education environment, inside of a commercial environment, a government building, you name it. Uh, nine times out of 10, all of those security feeds are not being uh, monitored by anyone, or if they are, it's impossible to monitor more than one camera at a time. So the idea behind ZeroWise is being able to integrate that artificial intelligence algorithm into those existing cameras to be able to remove that human from having to stare at a screen 24-7, 365, looking for a threat. Because ultimately, if you sneeze, look at your cell phone, eat lunch, use the restroom, you're going to miss something on there. And that's just the way that it is. Uh, so ZeroWise AI does not get tired. We're able to monitor that persistently 24-7 uh, and then detect, track, and communicate those threats throughout the entire uh, incident, providing real-time situational awareness back to first responders. But you've got a new contract coming up. So um, I guess there, well, what I've read, my, my understanding is that the Air Force is looking to you guys to maybe develop something that also has a drone-enabled capability and would work for active shooter scenarios in multiple situations. Can you tell us a little about, I know it's early, you just kind of got that awarded, but where's that at? What's the timeline? Kind of what are you guys exploring there? So backing up to August of last year, we were awarded a commercial solutions opening contract with Tyndall Air Force Base to deploy our weapons detection algorithm on the installation on the existing security camera infrastructure there at the base, underneath of the base of the future program. We we're one of uh, you know, 400 companies or so that went through the down select process and then one of very uh, a few that, that ended up receiving a contract award as a part of that. Um, in November timeframe of last year, we we responded to the 21.1 AFWORKS SBIR solicitation for a phase two conversion. Uh, that allowed us to be able to work with Ellsworth Air Force Base uh, to sort of develop out a little bit more of our capability. And so ultimately by leveraging the existing security camera infrastructure that's on a base to trigger a robotic response what we see that as is being able to reduce the response time even further by having an automated process that enables us to interdict, uh, deter, and disorient a potential threat to an installation. Ultimately, we'd rather put a robot in front of a would-be threat on an installation than a person. And so what this allows us to do is potentially disorient or deter that threat uh, before the security forces or military police or master at arms team get to that location first. And so that's what we're looking at doing as a part of this process with the Air Force. So, you know, some people, when they deal with AI and cameras, the first thing that comes to their mind is privacy concerns, like facial recognition, you know, whether it's a school with kids or whether it's just people out doing their daily lives. Um, is that what this is or is it something different? Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, we've taken great strides to look at the privacy concerns that our software and our AI uh, would, would, would bring up. And uh, as a object detection capability, where we're looking at a uh, object in hand, a firearm uh, that has to be brandished, that has to be visible, uh, that's the only time that you're ever gonna hear from Zero Eyes. Uh, we have no ability to look into uh, those live camera streams from our clients. Uh, we can't get those. The only thing that we'll receive uh, is a detection uh, of, of a firearm. Uh, we'll provide a what's called a keyframe image, a timestamp, which is the time elapsed since that weapon was last seen, and a geolocation based on where the camera is located at. Uh, we're focused only on the gun. So from an ethics standpoint, from a data privacy standpoint, uh, and just overall PII concerns, uh, it's either you have the weapon or you don't. And, and so for us, we take that very seriously. We work within our client's data privacy requirements. Uh, we don't maintain any data in our on our side. Um, so from that standpoint, we've been able to go through and, and, and monitor in a lot of different locations uh, and not infringe upon anyone's data privacy or any privacy rights. So cameras are everywhere, especially around schools and military bases. 
If this software is effective and can be put on drones, then former Marines, Navy SEALs, and other veterans will be spitting in their dip cups many a late night, waiting, watching, and ready to spot a weapon before it fires. We'll keep our own eye out for new developments on this and other interesting tech. This has been Todd South with Military Times.